the next node on the list is the field node i'm going to edit over here and since i haven't connected it to anything it will affect the whole thing so even if we had more nodes over here this is going to create a field deformer to everything if you want to just marry it to one of them or to the end of the hierarchy just drag a line and in this case we won't see any difference because we are working with just just one structure so the field tool is a deformer or you can actually think about it as an effector if you know how the MoGraph model is built inside Cinema 4D meaning that it will add deformers to manipulate particle position, scale, color and much more if I'm going to open up the affected properties I can tell it what I want it to affect so in this case if I'm going to raise the size we can see that those particles which are falling in the area of the sphere are getting much bigger. If I want to colorize them, I can click on this color chip and let's just choose something very obvious like red and then change the color slider over here to something closer to 100. You can even go beyond it in order to colorize those particles which are under the field type. And of course you can change the type to something different so instead of sphere you can go with box you can also go with gradient and object you can bend stretch twist and use other stuff which are really exciting so let's just try the bend stuff and every time that you're going to switch type you will get different controllers so in this case I have a new slider bend amount let's just bend it to see how this is looking pretty impressive if I'm going to switch it from bend to, for example, twist, I will get a twister amount. Now, if I'm going to change this twist amount, we'll get a completely different look. Maybe not so high. Let's go with 15 in this case, or maybe 25. And once again, I just want to remind you that everything that we are seeing here is full 3D. So we can actually create something very, very interesting just by changing the type of this field distortion let's go with spirals just so you'll see that we are getting different kinds of controls so in this case we are getting spiral amount over the y-axis or maybe all axes and of course you can play with it until you find something useful or once again use one of the settings in order to really control what you are getting once again i'm going to twist it so you can get a sense of how this is forming now in the field properties we can control the size of the field we can control the feather which is the transition between the field deformer and the other particles we have as before effect over life so all the things that you already feel comfortable with are waiting for you over here and just to show you a little bit of a prettier example once again i'm going to go up choose one of the presets by clicking on presets browse and we're going to stick with this heads up display so the same hat category let's go to the data one and I'm going to choose the texturizer and once again replace everything that I have now I'm going to go up and open up my camera and reset it so we'll have a more traditional look in the scene and you can see that once I'm using this preset, I'm getting this Earth PNG layer on the timeline. I'm going to double click on it so you can get a sense of how this is looking. This is what creates the Earth map over here. And this is what the field deformer is actually using in order to create those textures in the continent. So if I'm just going to disassemble it in front of you, we have an emitter grid type, which creates this grid. And, you know, just so it will be more easier, I'm just going to temporarily turn off the visibility of the turbulence and the field tools over here. I'm going to once again highlight the particle section. This is using a texture shape. So if I'm going to open up the texture, we can see that this is based on layer number two, which is the data layer. Layer number two in this case is just a simple comp with few shape layers inside After Effects. If I'm going to go back to our composition, we can see how this is going to work. So the particles themselves have this shape. We don't need to actually make it visible. I just want to demonstrate where we are getting those different shapes. Now back inside Stardust, I'm going to fold up the grid and the particles. 
and then I'm going to apply the field. And the field is using in this case the maps, which is so deep here, it can be its own tool. But in this case, we are getting maps inside the field. And the maps will allow you to not only use a layer in the composition, in this case, this Earth PNG, it will also allow you to control a lot of other stuff as we've seen before, such as the time sample and the way that this will affect your particles. So a lot of very complex and deep properties that you can choose from. And now if I'm just going to move a little bit forward in time, we can see that we are using this earth texture. Let's just zoom out so you can get a sense of how this is going to work to create those nice particles. And everything of course is still live. So if I want more particles per second in order to make this grid more tighter, you can go to the emitter section, hold down shift, and then just, you know, make it look more dense as I'm showing it to you right now. But what's interesting here is that we can actually use this field as a texturizer for the particles that we want to affect. And I just want to highlight that beside texture, you can also control the color scale and the position of those particles. And just to make it more advanced, we have an additional turbulence displacer over here, which is actually animating on one of the axes. As you can see over here, the axis is X to create this moving animation of all the tiny particles which are forming the Earth map using the data which is being fed into the field effector.